Okay, in this presentation, we are going to look at the Dixon Q test. Now, the purpose of the Dixon Q test in undergraduate statistics is to help the student become acquainted with the process of hypothesis testing, particularly the procedure that might be involved in it. Now, this sort of assumes that the student would be doing sort of pen and paper type exercises, which would be more complex come exam time. But the Dixon Q test is a good way just to sort of get started at the whole process. So in statistics, the Dixon's, Dixon's Q test, or simply the Q test, is used for the identification and rejection of outliers. So it should be used sparingly and never more than once in a test. And really, at a practical level, you'd probably be using more complex, more, uh, more elaborate outlier tests once you get into real-world analysis. So to apply a Q test for suspect data, Arrange the data in ascending order in increasing values and calculate the test statistic as follows. So this is the test statistic QTS and this is the gap divided by the range. So this is probably the first time that people will sort of come across this notion of a test statistic. Okay, TS there stands for test statistic. And so this is something you'll be using quite a lot when you sort of do pen and paper hypothesis tests. Essentially, it's a sort of metric for the strength of evidence while for the hypothesis test you're going to uh, apply it to okay now here the gap is the absolute difference between the outlier in question and the closest number to it so if the outlier is either the minimum value or the maximum value and the gap is the absolute distance to the next value which would either be the second lowest or second highest value now if the if the test statistic QTS is greater than the critical value, where the QCV critical value is a critical value found in statistical tables, then we reject the questionable observation. Okay, so let's look at an example here. So this is our example. Use the Q test, the Dixon Q test, to determine if there is an outlier present in the sample. You may assume a significance level of 5%. So here we have the values there, 133, 139, all the way up to 124, 132, and 136. So there's 10 of them there, n equals 10. We're gonna sort of make a remark upon that. State the null and alternative hypothesis for this test. Compute the test statistic, state the appropriate critical value, and then what is your conclusion to this procedure? Okay. So the first thing we do is put the data into ascending order. So here I have it in ascending order, and essentially it is just this data in proper ascending order. Okay, that's it. Just re I rearranged it. Now what we have to do is determine which value is the outlier. Now it's either, be, either going to be the minimum or the maximum. So essentially what we do is look at the gap there between the lowest value and the highest value and the rest of the data. So 123, 123, is that that far away from the rest of these values? Or is it 159, is it that far away from the the next, it, the highest values after it, okay? Well, essentially what we do is look at the gap there. I mean, the gap there is literally one between 123 and 124, the lowest value and the next lowest value. So I don't think that's the outlier. That makes no sense because if there's a number, Right beside it, that's almost the exact same, well, just one difference, you know, that's hardly an outlier if there's something so similar to it. At the gap there between the highest value and the second highest value is 17. So that is going to be our potential outlier. It's the maximum value, 159. Sometimes you'll actually be told explicitly which is the potential outlier is the maximum or the minimum, but you have to make a judgment sometimes. So what we can do here is state the hypotheses. So we can formally state the null and alternative hypotheses as follows. So this is a very important step in hypothesis testing. Actually just making a statement here about what your null hypothesis is and the alternative hypothesis is. I won't go too much into what a null and alternative hypothesis, what they are uh, in this particular presentation because a lot of detail, but hopefully you'll become more familiar with it and just spend time on getting the, getting used to what these are but this is a very important step typically you might actually uh, associate a mathematical statement with the null and alternative hypothesis but it doesn't really sort of 
there isn't one that's sort of suitable in this particular instance, so you just have to save that for another time. Anyway, the null hypothesis is that there is no outlier, in the, no outlier is present in the data, or it, there isn't an outlier. And then the alternative hypothesis, H1, is that there is an outlier present in the data, and in this case, it's the largest value, 159, the maximum. Now, this is an important step, writing out something like this in your hypothesis test. It's, you know, you should always do something like this in an exam situation. So the test statistic for this procedure is as follows. So this is our test statistic here, QTS, and it is the gap divided by the range. So the gap is the difference between the potential outlier and the next value. In this case, the next value is 142, so the gap there is 17. And again, just to confirm, it's these two numbers here. Okay. The range of values, now you're noting that the minimum there is 123. The gap there, the range is 36. That's the range of between the difference, the difference between the maximum and the minimum, 36. So our test statistic is the gap divided by the range, which is 17 divided by 36, which is 0 0.4722. Now, before we look at the critical value, which I have down below, well, we should confirm the sample size of the data set as n equals 10. Now, that is actually, you can check it there yourself, but you will see very quickly that there are 10 values there. Okay, n equals 10. So, the critical value can be determined from the following table, which is down here. And we are told to use a 5% significance level and use the row n here so this is the, the column here is this one here and the row we have to use is n equals 10 so essentially that's what we're doing there we look use this row which is indicated by what the sample size is n and this column here because we were told to use this level of significance so that means that the critical value that we are going to use for this test is 0 0.466. Now, I'm deliberately not sp explaining too much about what a critical value is, but I mentioned before that a test statistic is a sort of s a measure of the strength of evidence behind an alternative hypothesis. The critical value is a sort of threshold that it must surpass for the null or the alternative hypothesis to have sufficient weight, okay? And typically, in pen and paper examinations, critical values are found using statistical tables. And the predetermined level of significance is sort of how much of uncertainty are we willing to accept. That's, that's a sort of very, very brief definition of it there. I realize that there's a lot going on here, but essentially I just want to sort of get you, get you used to following the sort of whole procedure. And allowing you to sort of spend time going into all the details later on okay because there's a lot of details typically this stuff takes about three or four weeks of an undergraduate module okay I can't cover it in five minutes anyway the decision rule is the test statistic greater than the critical value if so what we do is reject the null hypothesis that is to say we do have sufficient evidence to sort of support the, the argument made by the alternative hypothesis Otherwise, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, which is to say there's not enough evidence to support the alternative hypothesis, okay? Really, it's not about whether something is true or false or not. Really, the whole thing about a test statistic and a hypothesis, hypothesis test is essentially about the strength of evidence. It's not if, if whether or not something is true or false. It's about the strength of evidence, okay? That's an important detail. So here, the test statistic is 0 0.4722, and that is greater than the critical value 0 0.466. So therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. And that is to say, there is sufficient evidence to treat the maximum value as an outlier at a 5% significance level. Okay? So, that's how we might sort of state our conclusion. Now, just as a sort of quick remark regarding outliers and confidence intervals, we're not proving it's an outlier. We're just sort of saying that it is very different from the rest of the numbers. Okay. And what to do with outliers, that's a whole different story. But anyway, so 
that is our sort of procedure for the Dixon Q test, which is a sort of practice run at doing hypothesis tests that will prepare you for more complex examples later on. Okay, we'll leave it there.